All right, guys, so we uh, rearrange our YouTube a little bit here. We have all our random vlogs over here that is not involved with Formula Drift or working on the car. We have all of our Formula Drift vlogs right here, and we have all of our work uh, vlogs over here in workflow section now, all the stuff going on around the shop and dyno sessions and stuff like that. So we're going to add a video to this right now about our dry sump tank install. So I hope you guys enjoy it. What's up guys? Uh, today we are moving along with the dry sump setup. I know we talked about possibly doing it last time and uh, we're going forward with it this time. So I got my whole enclosure done. It's all right, my sheet metal work isn't the best and um, I was kind of working around all the cages of the tube. So um, it's kind of an oblong box that sort of fits around the cage, but uh, it worked out okay. Um, we're going to be installing a aluminum door on top of that today. So we have access to the tank and we're gonna be installing the mounting brackets for the tank itself today. Uh, those took a little while to come in, but they look great. They were great pieces. They have these nice anodized, uh, or not anodized aluminum, they have these nice uh, machined aluminum uh, brackets to them that uh, look nice and sturdy. And, uh, you know, it's a three gallon oil tank, so you got to be sturdy. Um, so we're going to move forward with that. So uh, I was trying to figure out a way to be able to access the dry sump tank because it's behind the passenger seat and with the arrangement of the seat it's almost impossible to get your hands back there and I had to have a way to uh, one fill the tank and two check the level. So um, I was thinking about putting a door on the, on the window, I was thinking about making the whole window hinge so it came open which would be really cool but a lot of effort. Uh, the easiest thing that I came up with was to re-drill out the holes for my NACA duct here and use some D-ring uh, quarter turn fasteners for it so it can just easily pop right off. You know, these guys are quick quarter turn fasteners. The hoses aren't on it right now, but with the hoses on, I already experimented with this. It'll just, you can just push it back and up like that and then it'll be out of the way. And then I have this whole hole to access the dry sump tank. So um, we already figured that part out. So I'm gonna pull the window off right now and we're gonna pull the top off the dry sump tank and we're gonna get the tank in there, get the mounts on it and uh, see what we can do. Back to you, Johnny. even labeled top <laughs> okay so now we start the fun part fabrication we're going to find some material back behind me and we're going to uh, start making our bracket side mount so the part that would uh, attach the bracket would directly attach to and then we're gonna make the part that directly attaches to the car and then we're gonna find the space in between so let's get to work on the tank all right so this is our uh, Peterson dry sum tank uh, three gallon this says they, I think they start at like two gallons and go up to four or five gallons. Um, this one is a uh, single outlet, dual inlet. This is for the breather can. Um, this guy actually has a tube that goes down into the bottom, so it picks up from the bottom. These guys, um, I believe they have a swirl effect that goes in on the inside, and that's why they come around the side. I think it's swirled and baffled. I'm not exactly sure because I haven't taken the tank apart yet. Um, so we're going to be running a dash 16 line out here up to the pump, which will go from the pump to the engine. And then uh, the scavenge will pull from the valve covers or the heads uh, and the pan, and that will pull to the pump. And then from the pump that will go uh, through two dash 16 lines to the inlets right here and just keep filling the tank and recirculating the system. So um, that's pretty simple. The complicated part was mounting brackets and all that. Um, I tried to make sort of a mounting system here out of some 
T-bolt clamps that I have, I ended up bolting the two of them together. The biggest ones that I have were only that long, only about half the width of the tank. So I bolted another one together. It works. Um, I cut up a engine belt um, to give it sort of some rubber mounting in there so we're not strapping straight to the tank. But the real issue that I have with it are these flimsy sort of brackets here. These things are made out of steel, but they look only about 060, maybe 073 thickness there. So um, I'm just not confident in those holding up, even there right there. You can see I can flex them with my hand like that. So I decided to spend the extra $80 and uh, buy the brackets that are made for the tank, which are some of the nicest T-bolt brackets I've ever seen, actually. This billet piece on the bottom, they have bolts going through here, so it's not complete ring that goes around it. Rubberized there, rubberized all the way around. Uh, this looks like it'll hold three gallon oil tank. Um, that thing is big and with three gallons of oil, it's gonna be rather heavy. So um, we're pretty much good to go on that. We're gonna take off the old ones. We're gonna put on these new ones right here. We're gonna put the tank in the enclosure and kind of see what kind of bracket we're looking at. The uh, back of the seat kind of has an angle to it and the bracket wants to sit straight. So we're most likely gonna make a uh, bracket that bolts to the back of the seat and a bracket that bolts to these two rings like that and then we're gonna find the space in between and sort of weld something in between there to make it all work. So um, right now I'm gonna pull this guy apart and, uh, or not all the way apart, pull the brackets off, put these brackets on and we'll get over to the car. Solid brackets. Let's go to the car. It's kind of like a keg, doesn't it? Not bad. Plenty of room down there for the fittings. Plenty of room for the bracket. It's going to be a pain to get all the bolts tight, though. It's just going to be a pain. All right, so we're gonna start making the uh, mount for the bracket side here. Um, I'm gonna use this one inch angle iron that I found over there. I was gonna go a little bit smaller, but this is all I have lying around, so we're gonna use it. We're gonna cut these down to fit the bracket right like that. So, start by sort of measuring our length here. Looks like six inches is gonna be our magic number. Um, Easiest thing to do would be actually to drill holes in here and weld bolts to the back of this so this had studs that came out this direction. So then we could bolt the bracket on and then get the tank in and it would just slide over those studs and you just have to tighten down these. I gotta think this through because, you know, if I do this wrong it's gonna be really difficult to bolt everything down and get it solid uh, while it's in the car. So we're gonna cut these down to six inches and I think we're gonna go with that stud idea. I think we're gonna weld a uh, bolt to the back of it so we have four studs coming through. Um, so let's head over to the saw, get these cuts, we'll pop some hole in here and weld some bolts to it. So what we're going to do here, we're going to take these bolts like that and we're going to weld them there so we have studs and then we can just sort of slide the tank in and bolt it up. Should be pretty easy to access these guys on the other side so I think that's the way we're going to do it. Um, I'm not going to weld these on there yet because I'm going to leave my options open. There might be a better idea, and I don't want to get ahead of myself. But we do have those ready to go, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to bolt these together right now, and then I'm going to weld little plates right here and right there to kind of square off the mount and finish off the mount. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. Pull out the wire, and we'll have some fun. Uh, I need nuts. I lost my nuts. Here. 
So we're looking at it's like seven and three eighths, roughly. Yep. Okay, so seven and three eighths, and we're looking for it's like one and a quarter inch steel strap. Hopefully, I have it. Let's go take a look. I don't know if we could just cut it in half. To fill that gap with a little bit of weld would be pretty good. Our camera battery died when we were shooting the welding of the tank bracket, so we missed out on that part. We're moving on to the car side of the bracket now, so we're going to drill some holes out of the angle iron. We already got them cut down to six inches. We'll drill those holes out and uh, we'll start mounting those on the car. We'll weld the studs to it, get that bolted solid to the car and then we'll box everything off once we finish it off. So let's get to it. All right, so now we're gonna pull this front panel off and mark our holes to drill out the back panel. Okay, so quick change of plans. I know we were sort of aligning the bracket on the car and we're gonna weld the studs to it and slide those on as two separate pieces. But uh, you know, I got some thinking and I wanna make that as one piece just so the holes uh, stay true to their alignment and everything is sort of true after we weld everything together because there is a chance that once we start tacking the uh, tank side of the bracket to the car side of the bracket that things are gonna move a little bit. And I don't want those to move, those, those hole alignment spots to move and basically make it hard to either get out of the car or put into the car after that because that is spread or contract a little bit. So we're going to weld that together on the bench right now and then we're gonna get on the car and remark our holes and start drilling stuff out. Let's do it. All right, so we got our bracket here, uh, got our magnets all holding everything together, trying to be a little bit more professional about our assembly than we were on the last one here. Um, so we're gonna tack it all together, throw it on the car, and see what it does. All right, so we got our bracket here. Now that it's all together in one piece, we already have our height kind of mounted from the uh, previous marks that we made. So we're gonna go in here, and we're gonna mark our holes and punch them. All right, so we're setting up this bracket on the drill press right now. Uh, it turned out our bottom holes are a little bit too close to the bottom of the trunk line. Um, so it wouldn't allow us to use an oversized washer and properly attach the bracket. So I'm gonna move the bottom holes up about an inch and that'll give us plenty of room for a nut and a washer. See where those ended up on the back side. All right, so our bolt came through. We got plenty of space here to the base so we could fit a large washer and it looks pretty good. All right, so we got both sides of our bracket done. We've got our holes drilled out on the car. We're gonna weld the studs to both sides of the bracket so we can basically put the tank in the car after that and then start making up the space in between the two brackets. All right, so we got both our brackets here. We're gonna unbolt this one from here and we've got our studs that are just M8 bolts that we sanded all these zinc plate coating off of. We're gonna weld those four guys in there like that so that we have studs on the back and we can just slide the bracket on in, make it nice and easy. Let's get to it. All right, 
And then we get our studs nice and sturdy in here. We're gonna weld this side and uh, they should be nice and solid. What we should do is wrap these in some aluminum foil tape or something to keep any spatter from collecting on the threads um, because spatter likes to do that. And if you weld the stud and you have spatter on the thread, it's no good. So uh, we're gonna wrap those up real quick. You know, I could just put some sockets over them or something. Nice and protected, looking good to weld. Um, what we do need to do, since these are zinc coated, even though I did sand them all off, uh, I'm gonna open up the bay door, we're gonna set up a fan, and uh, make sure that we're doing this very well ventilated. So we got our bracket here all welded up. This is our uh, car side of the bracket. This is our uh, tank side of the bracket right here, but that one's still hot from welding. This one's cooled off just enough to put up against the paint. Actually, you know what, I'm gonna sort of, it's still pretty warm. But I think it'll be all right. I don't think it's gonna burn anything. Let's see if this guy lines up at all. Does not. We got to go wider on that one. So let's grab a little bit bigger drill bit and let's go a little wider. All right. So we got our holes kind of widened out here a little, little bit. This bottom right one gave us some trouble. We had to go a little wider than I would like on that one, but it does slide on into position now. So we're going to bolt it up from the back now. We're going to bolt the other one onto the tank. We're going to get the tank in there and it uh, should be looking pretty good. Alright, bracket's nice and solid. Let's go uh, get the bracket mounted to the tank and put the tank in there. Alright, so we got our tank bracket here. Let's see how it fits. Slides on, no problemo. Get some nuts and bolts on there and let's go get it in the car. There we are. All right, so we got our bracket in there and it turns out that uh, we don't even need to connect the space uh, at the bottom part of it. We're just gonna tack that together and then we're going to connect the space at the top and uh, pull it out, weld it together. Should be good to go. All right, so uh, we got our bracket in place. We are grounded. Uh, we're looking good. Um, we're going to go ahead and tack it in place. This is going to be real interesting getting in there with my helmet. I can't see shit, so hopefully those are good. Oh, that one's not good. Oh. Not bad. All right. So let's make the top part. We'll get that tacked together. And uh, we should be able to take it out after that. All right, all right. All right, so we got our uh, one of our little top parts of the bracket in there, magneted in place. We're going to tack that in there. We're going to do the same thing on the other side.
All right, so we've got our bracket pretty much all tacked together. We're going to uh, kind of figure out the best way to take it in and out of the car. Um, we can't leave the bracket attached to the tank because it won't fit past the roll cage. Or you know what? It actually might. Let's try it. We're gonna try that. If that doesn't work, then we're gonna unbolt the bracket from the tank after it's unbolted from the car because it'll be a lot easier to access those bolts that way. So uh, let's uh, unbolt it from the back and try, it, take it out all, try and take it out all as one piece and see what happens. All right, so we got our bolts loosened on the back. Uh, we're gonna try and wiggle this thing out of here. Sort of see how it goes. See if we can do it without burning the thing off. Okay, that part went well. Looks like we can get it through that part of the cage. And if we go sideways right here, should be able to, ah! Oh! Ah, oh, look at that! And there's somewhat a look at our finished dry sump bracket. So let's go uh, weld about half of it together, we'll bring it back in the car, make sure it fits, make sure nothing tweaked, and uh, we'll be good. Ooh, we're going to protect these studs again. So let's get on it. Cool, so we got our bracket all welded up here. Um, it's pretty nice. Not exactly the prettiest thing in the world, but um, it's gonna work. So, well, hopefully it's gonna work. We're gonna bolt our tank to it here. We're gonna take it over to the car and uh, hopefully everything fits. Wish me luck. All right, let's take it over to the car. All right, let's uh, slide her in. Go in sort of the same way that we did before. And this uh, come through this direction. Seems like it'll work like that. All right, not bad, not bad, not bad. Now, got to line it up with our holes back here. Not bad at all. All right, we got about, feels like about a half inch clearance or so. I can fit my fingers underneath it. So um, it's good. We're not sitting on the ground or anything. Let's bolt it up and we'll see how the uh, drain hole lines up with the hole in the chassis below. Cool. All right, I'm just getting these nuts on the back of the bracket right now. Rather uncomfortable position to be working in, but you know. Had a lot worse, for sure. All right, so for the first time here, uh, the dry sump tank is fully bolted solid in the car and it looks great. We got clearance on uh, both sides of our box here. We can turn this and get a little bit more clearance for our fittings if we need it. Tank feels nice and solid. As you can see, you know, when you shake the tank, it shakes the whole car right there. So what we're gonna do next, we're gonna put the front cover back on, we're gonna put the top on and we're gonna mark where the center of this cap is. And we're gonna, I bought a little six inch aluminum door we're gonna put there, a little flap door so we can access this cap. So that looks pretty good. We're gonna mark sort of a rough center and pop a hole in it and just hope and pray that it's right where it needs to be. What do you think, right about there? That looks about right. Looks about right. All right, let's pop a hole in it. Should be able to use the hole punch, actually. Hole. I'm gonna put a little mark in the center of that so we actually know what we're looking at here. Hopefully it lines up. It's a little off center. Nobody's perfect. Realistically, we need to be more up over this direction, actually. So it is, I'd say, right about up here. No, a little bit further down, more like right here. Yeah. 
pole number two. Hopefully that's correct, and if it is, we'll use that as our center point to draw out our hole to cut for the door. Oh, that's so dead on. It's not even funny. That's eh, a little off, but I'm going to pretend it's exactly dead on. It's dead on if my head's like right here. Realistically above it's right here though, so. It's fine. But, Perfect. you know what? Dead on. When you bring it down, it's actually pretty darn close. We're going to go with that. Oh. All right, so let's drop the door on there and let's cut it on out. All right, so we got our little door here. We're going to draw it up on our piece of aluminum and uh, see how she looks. We have our drawing. This is sort of the inside radius of that. Realistically, we're going to cut a little bit larger hole for that. We're going to leave room for the hinge and leave a little bit of overhang. Um, so what we're going to do for that uh, is we're going to use a hole punch for the radius, which will give us this nice clean corner right there. So we're going to use those and uh, we're going to punch out the four corners and then we're going to cut with the cutoff wheel in between there and hopefully get, get a nice clean uh, square hole with the rounded corners. So let's start. We're going to mark sort of where the center is on these, right at that corner right there. We're going to punch it. We're going to do the same on all four corners. Alright, let's head over to the punch, punch those out. So now we are going to punch out our hole here. Right like that. There you go. So uh, we're looking good here. We got our hole cut. It's a little rough, so we're gonna file it down and then start marking our holes for our rivets and finish up this little door. All right. the first time to actually put together a Zeus fastener. I normally buy them, you know, uh, with the spring and the plate already on there, all the weld the plates on there, so. Now we have a functioning door. Not bad, right? Alignment looks pretty good. Clearance looks pretty good. Rivets look good. Let's see how it lines up with the actual tank. And then we'll be impressed with ourselves. Okay. There we go. The problem that we're having right now is this panel actually bends a little bit. So as you can see, it bends the door up slightly right there. So what I'm going to do is sort of give the door a little bit of a bend in the vise. I'll just sort of vise it along and sort of massage it to where it's uh, kind of sitting flat there. 
All right, so uh, we've got our panel in here. We're gonna give this door sort of a slight bend this direction, kind of just by hand. We're gonna move it up a little further there. We're gonna grab it again. Just give it a, a little bit of a bend there. So as you can see now, it's just got a little little tweak. We're gonna hope that forms with this panel as this panel starts to flex that direction as you can see it almost looks pretty good yeah let's go check it out and this corner's pinned down and everything pretty aligned it actually looks like i bent it a little bit too much so let's see how strong this thing actually is that looks pretty darn good hold on a second bet you haven't seen one of these before it's an actual tool for these fasteners Box is finished, man. I'm pretty sure. That's it. Box is finished. Mount's finished. Um, I guess we can start thinking about plumbing. Start cutting holes down there for the uh, Dash 16 hoses that are going to be heading up to the front of the car. Not bad, not bad. I like it. Cool. Okay, so we're all done with our sheet metal enclosure. We put the door on top. We mounted the tank. Um, Everything's pretty much ready to be plumbed, so now we're just waiting on the engine to come in, and then we're going to do all the plumbing to the dry sump system, and uh, we'll be good to go. Um, so that's the end of this video, and the next one coming up will be the engine install, transmission install. Um, depending on uh, timing, we may do uh, the trailing arm and differential install uh, before the engine install, um, but we may combine that just into one video depending on length. So I will see you guys next time, and thanks for watching. Thank you.